How is weather in there? How is life? <laughs> it's really beautiful here at the moment. It's just like spring has definitely sprung. Um, it's beautiful weather, but uh, we are all at home um, being sensible. Yes. Um, yeah. We are, we are too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to be sensible. Uh, uh, sensible. That's right. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attendance and uh, we appreciate that uh, that you are going to give us good uh, information about Exeter University. Yeah, thank uh, you. Why... Thanks for inviting yeah. me. Yeah. You're welcome. You are more than welcome. Yeah. Why we are not starting about uh, university when it is uh, established and uh, location? Could you give us a little bit information about Exeter? Yeah, sure. So, um... The history of Exeter University actually dates back to the 19th century. It was established um, as a college in about 1855, um, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until 1955 that it took on university status. Uh, and since then it's continued to grow. So we've expanded our colleges. We've also expanded our campuses. Um, mm -hmm. It's expanded quite rapidly in the last um, 10 to 20 years. So in 2012, we gained Russell Group status, which I can talk about a bit later. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. And um, we've continued to climb the rankings and now established ourselves as a top 10 uh, UK university. Excellent. Um, what about the, in the world? In the world, so in terms of our rankings, currently world rankings are, so for the QS rankings, we're 163. And in the Times Higher Education, 146. Excellent. Very good. Uh, what about the student number, international and national, undergrad and postgrad? Yeah, so um, student numbers, uh, overall, we've got uh, 23,500 students. Um, approximately 18,000 of those are undergraduates and 5,500 mm -hmm. are postgraduate. We're about 27% international students, so quite a high number of international students. Yeah. Um, and over 130 different nationalities represented. So it's very diverse as well. Um, we have over 600 uh, alumni from Turkey. Um, currently have just under 100 Turkish students enrolled with us. Um, we have two campuses. So mm -hmm. we have um, two locations. We have a location in Exeter. Um, mm -hmm. Overall, we're based in the southwest of England. Um, it's a very, very beautiful part of the country. We have hundreds of beaches, many award-winning beaches, um, two national parks. Um, and we're also located to lots of great cities. So we're based in Exeter, which is a great, um, quite a vibrant student city. We're an hour from Bristol and two and a half hours from London. So that's the main campus location. And we have about 17 and a half thousand students there. Um, we also have another location in Cornwall. Um, at the Penryn campus. It's a smaller mm -hmm. campus. We have about 6,000 students currently based there. Um, many students prefer Penryn because it has a, a more intimate, friendly atmosphere with those smaller student numbers. It always rates very highly for student satisfaction. Um, and it offers a slightly different, unique range of courses. So um, things like our renewable energy engineering programs are run there, uh, mining and minerals engineering mm -hmm. also run there. We have programs in marine biology, because its location very close to the um, uh, Atlantic coastline, marine biology there, um, also zoology and things like that. But students can also choose to study in Penryn if they want to do things like English, history, um, politics, and they just want that slightly more intimate, friendly atmosphere, you can choose to study at Penryn. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. Just, uh, just uh, before I st start to ask another question, I want to give some information to our followers. Arkadaşlar, e, lütfen unutmayın. İstediğiniz soruları yazabilirsiniz. E, soruları Alison'a soracağım. Elimden geldiği kadar e, lütfen e, sorularınızı yazın. E, arkadaşlarınız bana iletecek. Ben de Alison'a soracağım. Okay, you said uh, Russell Group. Could you give us uh, what is Russell Group? Uh, I know, but uh, I want uh, our followers to know as well. So the Russell Group is kind of like um, a membership or a ranking system in the UK. There are currently 24 Russell Group universities, um, and that's to do with research intensive, research excellence. Um, that means that many of our academics that are based at our university will have their own research activities, research projects, current projects that they're involved with alongside their teaching activities. Um, and it also means that as a university, we actively fund and foster those research activities.
Um, I think it has a really positive impact on the quality of our programs and our teaching, um, because often those programs are influenced by the cutting edge research that the academics are involved with. Um, and oftentimes students will have the opportunities to get involved with that research, which is also a really exciting thing um, for students. So for example, from my experience, I studied archeology span at Exeter. I did my PhD there, but even as an undergraduate student, um, there are opportunities for those students to get involved with the excavations and the research projects that the academics are involved with there. Okay, excellent, very good. Uh, could you uh, tell us uh, what our postgraduate, undergraduate student can study in there, or what is the most popular subject for Turkey student? As I can see, <laughs> There are, you have a lot of uh, Turkish students. It's very popular in Turkey, except at university. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a, a lot of different subjects. There's a real variety of um, choice at Exeter. We have six academic colleges. Um, so we have the business school, where students can study economics, business management, finance. Um, business and management is very popular in Turkey. Um, we have the medical school, so that does medicine and medical sciences. Um, there are specializations within medical sciences there in sports and exercise, human genomics. We also have some fantastic postgraduate programs in uh, the medical school. So we have the um, postgraduate program in extreme medicine, mm. which is 100% um, uh, clinical and it's taught in a series of six, um, I think it's more than six, clinical placements. And it's to do with medicine um, con being conducted in very extreme envir environments, so jungle, desert, um, very cold environments. That's a really interesting program. We have the College of Life and Environmental Sciences. So this includes things like biology, geography, geology, but also psychology, which is very popular with our Turkish students. Um, and we have the College of Engineering, Maths and Physical Sciences. So engineering, computer science, also very popular with Turkey, uh, Turkish students. Maths, physics, we offer astrophysics as well. Um, humanities, so there's history, archaeology, drama, art history, and finally, uh, social sciences. It's also very popular in Turkey, so international relations, politics, law. Um, we have the uh, School of Education, and um, we also offer sociology and criminology. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I, from my uh, experience, I know engineering and management is very popular in Turkey. It's the uh, most yeah. popular uh, program. Could you give us very little uh, information about engineering and management program for undergraduate students? Sure. Um, it's a relatively new program, and you're right, it's very popular, um, very much growing in interest, and very popular in Turkey. Um, really innovative program. It was uh, designed in partnership between our engineering department, and our business school, um, and it's it's a Bachelor of Engineering, so it's a BN, um, but it combines the fundamentals of knowledge and skills that you need for an engineering degree with management theory and practice. Mm -hmm. um, as part of the programme, you also have the option to focus on mechanical or electronic engineering, um, and it's a really great programme for those people who want to move rapidly up into managerial positions, but within um, an engineering context. I think it's also generally a great program because it just adds more strings to your bow. As um, somebody with an engineering degree, you're not just getting that technical engineering expertise, but you're also getting um, the numerical, the strategic, social skills that a business graduate will have. Um, it's a program where you can do placement. So you can do a placement year in industry. Yeah. Um, and there are also options to do summer placements with that course as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit more about placement because it is important uh, for the student, I know, uh, mm -hmm. this very good opportunity. Could you give us a little bit more information about placement? What is placement? How does it work? Yeah, it is a really excellent opportunity and it's something Exeter um, puts a lot of focus and attention on. Um, it's available on many of our programs, certainly in our engineering programs. Many of our business school programs will also offer, um, we call them W. Uh, WIE, so with industrial experience. And you'll see mm -hmm. that option available on many of our programs if you go and look at our website. Um, what it involves is a year that you'll spend working in a, rel a, a relevant field, a workplace. Mm -hmm. Usually it's the third year of your degree. So normally mm -hmm. um, an undergraduate degree will be three years, but mm -hmm. um, if you're doing this placement year, it will be a four year degree. You'll spend your third year in a work placement, and then you'll come back to university for your final year. Um, it's a really fantastic opportunity um, you're, because 
I mean, in, in any kind of field, the skills that you gain in an academic environment are, are kind of different to the skills that you gain in a workplace environment. So to be able to add that to your CV within the context of your program um, is such a valuable thing to do. It also means you're getting out there and making contacts in, in the workplace, in the field that you can might be useful then when you do graduate and you go to look for work. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, just a small question about placement here. Mm. Uh, how much will be how much student will pay during that uh, placement year so there is a small fee it's, it's it's much reduced for that one year i believe it's it depends on the college but i think it's about 1800 you pay you're still okay. enrolled um for that year you still receive supervision and you still have access to all the university facilities you will also be expected to produce and submit a piece of work sometimes it's um a reflective essay or um, a project report something like that um, so it's a much reduced fee. It's also worth bearing in mind that many students who do placements also get paid for those placements. So they are getting an income. Um, it's not it's not 100% voluntary. Obviously, it depends on the work placement. Um, placements aren't guaranteed, but um, mm -hmm. because you're receiving a lot of um, extra support from the university to get those placements, um, it's very good. It's so, uh, for example, for the last few years within the business school placement, 79% of students who chose a work placement uh, program were successfully um, placed in a work placement. Excellent. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, let me ask. Uh, Jan Bey is asking, how about the scholarship? I was it, actually I was coming that scholarship, but Mr. John asked. Therefore, I uh, yeah, took sure. it in the front. You know, so let's talk okay. about scholarship. <laughs> Then next question I can ask. It's a good question. Yes, um, we do have scholarship uh, system at Exeter. It's called the Global Excellence Scholarship. And if you want to find out more, you can go straight onto the website and have a look. Um, they're worth around five thousand pounds, so they're not full mm -hmm. scholarships, um, but they are useful scholarships helping to reduce your tuition fee. Um, they're available, so they're, they're handed out slightly different depending on level of study. So at undergraduate level, they are handed out through the colleges. So there'll be slightly different scholarships available depending on which academic college you're applying to. But generally mm -hmm. speaking, they're £5,000 um, as a reduction for your tuition fee. If you're at postgraduate level, there is specifically um, a scholarship for Turkish students. Oh. So it's global excellence for Turkey. Um, again, similar amounts um, and it's a similar process. So it's based on academic excellence and we'll be mm -hmm. looking at the grades that you apply with. Um, so yeah. depending on what, what kind of grades you have, then um, you may qualify for a scholarship. Generally, we notify you uh, and you'll fill in up a nominal application form. Um, but it's fairly straightforward and fairly simple. Okay, very good. So everybody has to study and academically they should be excellent to okay. get the, your uh, scholarship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Fred. Uh, asking, I was wondering about the Faculty of Theology at Exeter. Yes, we do have Theology at Exeter. Um, it's not one I get asked about very much. It's a great uh, program. You can also do it in combination with other, other subjects. So it's one of we, we have a lot of subjects at Exeter which are quite flexible and you can combine with other programs. Um, so Theology is one of the ones that you can combine um, and flexible combined on those other ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite a small department, very friendly department. Um, I would recommend you get in touch with me. I can certainly find okay. out. You can pass okay. Emails okay. And okay. Uh, Fred Bay, if you get contact with us, we will uh, organize your connection with the uh, Alistair. Okay, the, let's talk a little bit more uh, about university, uh, about TEF, Teaching Excellence Framework. Uh, could you give us some more information about that? Yeah, um, Teaching Excellence Framework is something that has come into use more recently. Um, I think in response to the, the, the sort of the overemphasis perhaps on research, which is, as I've spoken about already, is really important in the context of universities. Research is a major aspect of what makes a good university and a good quality university. But it's not the only thing. And I think as an undergraduate student or a postgraduate student who's receiving mainly taught programs, um, you do want to know that the quality of teaching is also really good. Absolutely. So the excellence framework came in. Um, University of Exeter has received a gold award for its teaching excellence, and that means it's um, ex exceeding expectations. So you can be really confident that um, you'll be getting good quality teaching on the program. Excellent. Uh, what about the entry requirements? And I, I know it is changing from department to department, but for Turkish student, undergraduate student, and the postgraduate student, 
what is your entry requirement or yeah. uh, acceptance for postgraduate? Sure. Um, so for Turkish students, um, a kind of typical offer would be uh, for the Turkish diploma, we're looking for about 80%. Um, usually we'd look at the um, average grade over four years, but we can also just look at your final year grade. So often, mm. happens, um, I, know, I know in Turkey the situation is slightly differently and often students will put more emphasis on their final year. Um, so it's useful to be able to look at that grade, especially if they've been improving year on year. So yeah, we're looking for 80% as an average. Um, we also accept many international qualifications. So we accept the IB diploma, and mm -hmm. look at your overall score in that. So we'd be looking for between 36 to 38, or we can look at your three higher level subject scores. Um, so we'll be looking for three subjects, higher level at uh, grade six. We can accept APs, uh, subject tests, SAT2 subject tests, and we can accept combinations of all of these as well. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have some SATs, some APs, that's fine. Um, if you have, we, we do accept a really wide range of different curriculums and um, different international qualifications. So if, you, if there's something that you're doing that you're not sure about, the best thing to do is just get in touch with us. Um, yeah. You know. If student has got the MEB, the one you recognize high school, and um, but doing same time AP, but couldn't get the AP score. Do you offer uh, your uh, offer uh, with the or, I mean, MEB or AP or yeah, we can, of that? Yeah, we can make um, alternative offers. So if students okay. have a range of different qualifications, we can look at all of them. We can look at predicted grades and we can say, we can either offer you a place on the basis of um, your Turkish diploma score, mm -hmm. or if you end up doing better in your APs, your SATs, we can also offer you a place on that, on that Excellent, basis. excellent. What about the postgraduate students? What is the minimum so entry requirement? Students, yeah, we'd be looking for a first degree in a relevant subject. Um, and for GPAs, they do vary. So our equivalencies vary depending on the university. But as an average, I would say um, a GPA of 3.0 mm -hmm. um, or above. Okay. Arkadaşlar e, ortalama 3 diyorlar ama e, geldiğiniz üniversite çok önemli. Bazen 2.8 de 2.9'da da offer alma şansınız var. Bu yaptığınız çalışmalarla da paraleldir. Dolayısıyla e, 3 benimki 2.8 bana offer vermiyor deyip vazgeçmeyin. Bizimle itibata geçin. Biz e, elimizden geldiği kadar sizlere destek olarak üniversiteye kabul edilmenizi sağlamaya çalışırız. E, en önemli olan e, Not ortalaması ama bir iki puan alttaysa her türlü e, yardımcı oluruz. Uh, and others, uh, what about the fees, undergraduate and postgraduate fees? Yeah, um, so our undergraduate fees uh, range from, we have uh, lab-based programs. So those will be things like engineering, um, sciences, um, medical science and that kind of thing. Um, they are just under 23,000 a year. That would be the fee for those. Uh, for any of the humanities and social sciences, business school programs, those are 18,500 pounds, mm -hmm. British mm -hmm. pounds per year. Um, okay. The project programs, they vary a bit more. So they vary between 18,000 a year, or they're usually one year program, 18,000 mm -hmm. or uh, up to 25,000. Um, probably the most expensive program we have at postgraduate level is the MBA, which is 30,000. 30,000, okay. Okay, before I uh, go to another question, next question, I want to ask one question. Dilara asking about the research in neuroscience. Do you have any research uh, ongoing for the neuroscience? Um, we, have, we have a program in neuroscience. Um, and yes, there is, uh, our academics are involved in research there. Um, I don't have any sort of up-to-date stories on that. So again, I think that's one that you probably need to get in touch with me about. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Uh, there's another question about IB, uh, but over 80 from MEB. We already uh, respond to this uh, question. Okay, let's talk a little bit about accommodation. Mm -hmm. Students will come and live in there. So could you give us uh, information about accommodation and the price, please? Sure. Yeah, we have a really wide variety of accommodation at the University of Exeter. It's guaranteed in your first year, so it's a really good opportunity to make use of, to live in uh, university accommodation. It's a great way to meet people, 
to get involved in campus life and that kind of thing. Most of it is based on our campus, um, some within 15 minutes walk of the campus centre. Um, it's very, there's a, there's a big variety, so it's ranging from quite traditional catered halls of residence where you have your own room and then you get meals provided in a central hall. Um, there is also accommodation which is arranged around a kind of uh, apartment type idea so you'll have your own room but you might be sharing um, cooking facilities and bathroom facilities with several other students um, we have fully um, independent studio type mm -hmm. accommodation for students that just want a bit more independence um, there's also family accommodation so some of our postgraduate students are coming mm. with family and we can also cater to that so there's a really big range um, prices uh because there is such a wide range and also but worth bearing in mind there's a, a wide range of contracts so some students might want to stay for the whole year and some students might be going home for the kind of large summer break so it'll vary in terms of the contract but starting prices would be around four to five thousand pounds for the year mm -hmm. goes all the way up to about fourteen thousand but but that's when you're looking at like full accommodation three or four bedrooms for a family i would say average um yeah. somewhere between six and eight thousand for the year six or eight eight thousand in a year okay yeah, for a mid-range okay mid-range okay uh, once student arrived in there could you tell us a little bit about student life club and uh sport opportunities what are they sure yeah yeah exeter is a really um socially active university the campus is very very vibrant um we have over 250 different student societies. Um, so there's really a lot that students can get involved with. And I did um, bring up the list because there are just so many um, and they range. So we've got academic societies if you want to get more involved in your subject area. Um, we've got international societies. There's a Turkish society if you want to join that. We have media societies. So there's, um, um, there is a newspaper, there's a radio mm -hmm. station. Um, there's also a group that make uh, television, film programs, documentaries um, that are broadcast alongside the radio station. There are music clubs and societies, all different kinds of instruments, bands, singing groups, a cappella groups. There's a really um, well-known a cappella singing group from Exeter University that won a national competition. <laughs> Um, there are lots of outdoor and um, sightseeing and travel societies. As I mentioned, we're based in a really stunning part of the country. Um, and as much as there is to do on campus, it's really great to get off campus and start exploring. So that's those clubs and societies for walking and exploring and sightseeing are a really good way to do that as well. Um, drama, theatre, I mean, the list goes on. There's lots very of things. Good. Very good. Uh, we also have some really, really fantastic sports facilities, some of the best sports facilities um, in the country in terms of the universities. Um, we've invested 25 million in the last 10 years in our sports facilities. We have um, over 50 different sports clubs that you can join, and many of those are involved in the Bucks Leagues. So these are the competitive university um, competitions. Um, and last year, so the 2018-2019 year, we finished in fifth place overall in the Bucks League. So that shows we're quite a competitive sporting university. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Just uh, I'm going to back in the Turkish. Arkadaşlar tekrar e, herkese merhaba. E, görüşmemizin sonunda yaklaşık bir e, 7-8 dakika e, veya 10 dakika sonunda e, tekrar bir announcement yapacağım. İki tane çok güzel haberim var. De, beklerseniz o haberleri de size vermiş olacağım. Yeah, uh, hi, again, uh, Alison, back to Alison again. Can you tell us about career and job opportunities? Uh, what student has got in there? Yeah, so in terms of working while they're a student, um, we have a career zone based on campus, um, and that can help students to find jobs on the campus. And there are lots of jobs available. Um, there are a lot of facilities on campus, um, so there are uh, shops, bars, clubs, um, there's a music venue as a the sporting facility. So there are lots of ways that students can work on the university campus. Um, mm -hmm. And that's quite a good option for students because very often they'll be offering part-time jobs that fit in well with their courses and they don't interfere too much. Um, as a tier four student, so that's to do with your international visa, it's worth remembering that there's a limit on the number of hours you can work. Mm -hmm. So 10 hours is the limit. Um, there are also lots of jobs available in the city. So we're only 15 minutes walking distance from the city centre. 
Um, and yeah, it's very easy to go down there and get jobs as well. Okay, okay very good. Today, I got email from you about uh, virtual tour. Could you yeah. tell us about virtual tour? About because students can't travel there, but how they can uh, see your university? Yeah, definitely, we're really excited about that. So um, it's it's unfortunate that at this time of year, students are not able to come and visit us in person. But in a way, um, it's a great opportunity to kind of start practicing these more online uh, ways of seeing things. And for international students. Uh, uh, great really that we are doing this because it's so much harder for them to come and attend these um, open days anyway. So we have um, an offer holder open day. Um, it's from the 20th to the 24th of April. So any of our offer holders uh, who are already uh, have offers to study uh, in 2020, they mm -hmm. will be notified by email about that anyway. Um, yeah. For anyone else, we also have um, a pre-application undergraduate open day in May. So that's the 26th to the 29th of May. And that will be for all students, anyone interested in mm -hmm. finding out the university. Um, it's, it's a great setup. So there'll be particular sessions running throughout the day and there'll be kind of virtual rooms that you can go into. So if there's something you're particularly interested in finding out about, you can go into the virtual room and find out a bit more about that. Um, so yeah, it's a really good way to find out more about the university. We do also have a postgraduate virtual open day coming up and that'll be in June, 25th of June. Mm. We'll also send more information about those open days nearer the time. Excellent, that will be very interesting to have virtual <laughs> tour. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question about English requirement. Let's talk about offer holders who has got conditional offers. Yeah. Uh, about IELTS, as we know, uh, UK, we are asking for SALT uh, test, uh, secure English language test, yeah. uh, but it is impossible at this moment. Uh, yeah. As a university, is there any uh, update uh, IELTS requirement or English requirement? Yeah, so we're well aware of the difficulty at the moment and we are responding as much as we can um, and trying to be flexible, certainly with deadlines and things. What we've also done is we, we've moved our pre-sessional Eng uh, English online. Mm -hmm. um, so that's 100% online now. Um, they're available in 12-week or 8-week courses. Um, and if you're struggling to get the English language qualification, I would definitely have a look at those. They're offered by Into Exeter. So normally they're taught on our campus. Mm -hmm. but it can't happen at the moment. Um, so we're offer offering them fully online. Um, okay. I can send information to students who have a particular interest in that. Excellent. Actually, arkadaşlar, Cuma günü Intu ile e, aynı sesini Intu ile yapacağız. Orada Intu'ya yine bu e, pre-sessional e, ile ilgili sorularınızı sorarız. Intu da in, e, Exeter Üniversitesi içinde bir e, özel e, departman. Uh, again, uh, with the uh, offer holders, do they need to worry if they if this virus situations continue? Hmm. Uh, is there any B plan uh, for the university who wants to start September 2020? Any anything? I know it is too early, but yeah, maybe some. Tips. Of course, yeah. So we we know it's a really really stressful uncertain time um, for students anyway, actually for international students. But at the moment, more than ever, um, and we're just trying to keep students up to date. Um, so at the moment, we're planning for a 2020. Uh, September intake as normal on campus but obviously we know that the situation is changeable um, things can happen so we, we, there are there are conversations there are meetings going on all the time and there are contingency plans being spoken about so there's always the possibility that um, nearer the time we'll look at the idea of possibly blended learning so with some online mm -hmm. possibility of moving start date start date slightly further back um, some possibility of, um, of January start date or of online teaching. So we're, we're looking at all of those options. All options, yeah. We haven't officially implemented any of those yet. We're just no, no. making sure that there are plans um, because we, you know, we, we do want to be there for the students who have applied and are expecting to come and study and we want to be able to provide them a good ed okay. education as normal. Yeah. Okay. Final question. Actually, you talked this one, but let me ask. Jambe is asking international relations, politics, science, and especially American studies. A little bit information. Then after I'm finishing our conversation. 
Yeah, so that's one of the ones that you can study in both Penryn um, and Exeter. Um, international Relations and Politics, you can also do um, PPE at Exeter, so um, mm. politics, Philosophy and Economics, a very popular choice. Um, uh, it's a really fantastic programme, so you, you get great skills in that um, programme in terms of learning um, about the world, and um, how politics works, but also um, writing, debating, conversational skills. Um, Again, if you want more information, more detailed information, I would get in touch with me. Okay. Thank you very much, Alice. It was wonderful uh, speech conversation. It was very uh, fulfilled uh, information you provide us. Thank you very much again for your attendance. I hope we can do this, pr uh, like this program later on again. I hope so, yeah. Thanks everyone for coming. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.